Hey everybody, it's Mary Amick at Yard Art R Us. I am going to work on just showing you guys how to do the chicken. We had a lot of you guys order the chicken. So what I did today is I kind of started playing around in my shop and I uh, wanted to hopefully make a video that wasn't too long and at the same time go from start to finish uh, per se. Now, I went ahead and I um, base coated it white, and I think you guys can tell that the base coat on there is not totally covered, right? So I wanted to show you a little trick. In this case, because I know I have a lot of colors on this piece, okay, we're gonna have lots of color. I'm gonna go ahead and base coat the white part again. However, I want you to pay attention to the fact that when I'm putting my second base coat of white on, I'm not gonna put it all over the entire piece. I'm only gonna go ahead and put white paint right now on the parts that I know need to be white. So, what do I mean by that? I'm gonna put a second coat of the white on here, and um, this way I will uh, not use a whole lot of paint up here covering that and the reason i'm not putting white here is because i'm gonna put a lot of color on there so what i'm doing right now i'm just coming back and i'm going to put a second coat on the white part so to speak okay and i'm just going to blend it in with what's already there so i'm going to come over here like so kind of come down here and this way i'm going to make the white part of the chicken look really good so whenever you're painting, um, well, I guess anything, but I always think about painting yard art because that's what I do. But it really does matter what color you start with first and what color you apply second and what color you apply third. And all that matters a great deal in terms of how easy is this gonna be for you. So I always obviously wanna make it as easy on myself as I can. So what I'm gonna do is I'm starting with that white color because I know all the other colors are gonna go on top of that. So I've got my base coat of white right here. I wanna just hold this up for you. So you can see I'm just base coating the white on the part that I know the white is gonna show. On the other colors, on the other parts that I know are gonna to be totally different colors, I'm not gonna put a lot of white paint. I'm not gonna put any white paint there as a matter of fact. So this is the area right here between the petal and the uh, foot. So I'm gonna put a little white right here. And this is the, edible, the uh, area between the two right here. So there we go, and I got a little bit of white here. So by doing this, I went ahead and put the white on the parts that is important, but I didn't cover anything else with white. There's no sense in covering anything else at this point with white. Why? Because all this is gonna be covered with colors. This is gonna be covered with color, so is this, and of course the flower, the stem, and the feet, and the legs. So I have my white kind of pretty much happy with the way I, I want it at that point. So for me, then I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and start on my yellow flower. Now also, one thing I tend to do, and you don't have to, but I do think it's helpful, is I tend to start in the middle of my project, wherever that is, and then work towards my body. And then if I need to flip my project to work towards my body again. And the reason I do that is if I start down here and all of this is wet and I'm leaning over here, then of course I'm gonna have nothing but a mess. So I tend to start to work in the middle of my project and then work towards my body. And then that way things, uh, hopefully, that makes it a little bit easier in terms of trying to reach over and getting paint all over you, which you can tell I have paint on it anyway. But, uh, I'm gonna rinse out my brush just a little bit. We're gonna go yellow now. We're gonna do some yellow on this guy, on our flower. On the flower part, and uh, got a little bit of yellow on the tails. So I just reached out and cleaned my brush a little bit. And I put a, get a little bit of water out of it. So those of you who've been to the shop, you've seen this, all of our little cups. We use those, okay? So got my little cup of yellow. Notice my white is still wet over here, so I'm gonna obviously kind of try to stay away from that. And I'm going to take my brush and I'm just gonna kind of get up close to that white. That's all I'm doing at this point. I'm getting close, the yellow and the white to be close together. There we go. 
then uh, I'm just having that white, that yellow come right up to there. It's all about getting this, right now what we call this is we just call this the base coat, that's all I'm doing. Getting my color where I want it, so to speak. I'm gonna come up here, and I think Ashley even covered this in a different video. But we do tend to go ahead and paint our sides here, the same base color that you're using in, on your brush. You wanna make those sides look as good as you can. And uh, it's, I kinda think of it as color coordination. So I'm, I'm working on my little flower here. And because I started the white at the middle and I'm doing working towards my body this way, I'm not reaching over and messing up that white. So uh, maybe if I had longer arms, I wouldn't feel that way, but I'm kind of a short person. So I'm putting my yellow flower together and notice I'm not being, you know, dainty and precise and all of that. I'm just kind of putting it on there. No big deal, right? because I'm not worried about this part. I don't know if you can see that. There's a little part that's messed up. I'm not worried about that. This is not about being perfect. Just get close, and then I will fix that inner part in a little bit, okay? Now this particular piece has quite a few colors. That's one of the things that I like about it, is that it is very colorful. And I think when you get through with it, you'll, uh, you'll like it too. We had a number of people order this. Um, Okay, so it's last night that Ashley went live. Golly, it's just me or that seems like a long time ago. <laughs> it's only been 24 hours. So how, about, how are you guys doing out there? I'm looking at some of you guys, I see everybody. Uh, I'm hoping you are having a good day. I think uh, we're, I, I'm just kind of feeling like today was another Monday and I really don't know why, but it just kind of seemed that way. Now I'm having a little trouble right here. I've got what I call trash in my paint. And here it is. I think Ashley's done this before. We just, I just kind of pick it out with my finger because sometimes that's what happens. Paint can get kind of glumpy, lumpy. I just pick it out and move on. So I've got my flower pretty much done except for the stem part. And you can see this mop brush tends to put a lot of, mop, uh, a, a lot of paint on there. But in my case, this is what I want. So we're gonna put some green on here too. I'm gonna do a green stem. And then what I'll do after I get my stem the way I want it, I'll kind of start moving this thing a little bit and I'll work around the outside of my piece. And that helps me get everything that I want on this piece the way I want it without messing up and getting a whole lot of it on me or my elbows or my arms or anything like that. So this is just about putting that paint on there at this point, I'm just kind of going, I'm trying to kind of go fast, hoping I can finish all of this without uh, getting too long. So I hope you guys are uh, having a good day. I'm thinking tomorrow's gonna be better than it was today. I don't know, today is just kind of like, I could not get it together. All right, so I've done the middle of my chicken. I've done my flower, right? So I'm moving on to the, to the legs right here and it really doesn't matter what color i don't think we put here per se but i think i'm going to go with something i'm going to use something like what we call a reindeer brown okay so sometimes we get questions about color and how do you know what color to use and all that kind of stuff that's kind of a sixty-four thousand dollar question i don't think there's a right or wrong answer i think a lot of it is just personal preference I've developed a color, pal color palette that has taken me years to, to actually develop and get pretty much the way I want it. So uh, I think a lot of it is trial and error more than anything. And in my case, a lot of errors. But I don't know of another way to learn or another way to do it. All right, so I'm spreading my paint around. Kind of, I've got some lines going here, so I'm gonna kind of come back and just lightly feather it a little bit and get those lines out as much as I can. And again, I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna paint those sides. There we go. Because I have that mop brush, I can go pretty fast. Now, do not hit yourself with the steel rod state. That would not be good. Okay, so I've got that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this around. And again, I'm just turning it around and around, working closer to my body. So now, really what I have left at this point with this particular piece, is I've got the beak, and then I've got this, and then I've got the tail feather. So I'm gonna go ahead and do, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do this, because I know 
This is a case that you, you have two choices. You, you can go either way, there's no right or wrong way. I'm gonna show you the way I do it, but by all means, if you like something else, then you do it differently. So in this case, let me show you. This is what the, this part is gonna look like, right? I've got two colors up here. And I'll show you what I do. I do this because it's the simplest, quickest way. And uh, so I feel like anything that I do that makes it simple or quick, I wanna share with y'all. It makes it simple to go ahead and do it this way. You gotta let it dry and then come back. So what I'm gonna do, notice I'm gonna go ahead and cover up the spots. Now, you could, this is a good example. I want you to see how earlier, especially those of you that might've just joined, I said I put that second coat of white here, but up here I didn't put a second coat of white because it wasn't necessary, because I know I'm gonna cover all of this with color. And in this case, it's I guess what you would kind of call a sky, light blue, whatever you wanna call it. And since I'm covering it with that, I didn't need to put two coats of white on this area, just one coat of white on this area. So I'm gonna walk this back up here. I'm gonna come over here. And again, don't forget your sides. And notice I'm covering the spot, the uh, polka dots. And again, here's some trash, so I'm picking it up, wiping it on the table, sometimes my shirt, whatever's handy, uh, doesn't matter. So because I chose to go ahead and go this route and cover the whole thing, I'm gonna have to let it dry before I can come back and color my dots. But to me, I would rather let it dry a little bit and make it easy on myself. When it's really dry, we'll come back and put some dots on it. Now you could have, as you could have chosen to say, you know, come in here and paint this little area blue and this little area blue and this little area and this little area. And th that's kind of more of a pain in the you know what. So I just coated the whole thing and then when it's dry, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna put my coral on there because I'm not uh, trying to make this more difficult than it is. And a lot of times if you paint in this kind of weather, Right now the weather's not too hot, but sometimes in the summer I can just put stuff out and that paint will be dry in about 10 or 15 minutes. And then I could come back and put my coral pokey dots on there. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna do the bill or the beak, I guess, is what you would call it. Here we go. Now the only thing I have left at this point to base coat would be my tail feathers. So, and it has a lot of different colors. So I'm going to go ahead, I think, and I'm gonna go ahead and base coat this in that blue that I just did that other, and then I'll come back and lay the purple on top. This one I'm going to go ahead and base coat yellow, and then this one I'm gonna go ahead and base coat pink, I mean uh, green. And then I'm gonna show you in the other one, you're gonna come back and lay the color on the top of those tails. So, let's do that because it's all about making it easy, as easy as you can. Um, and because you have to think of art, I guess it probably be true of anything you make, create, design. It's all about the layers and it is, and it does matter what you do first and what, it does matter what you do second or what you do third. But the totality of everything is really just breaking it down into layers or phases or however you wanna, you wanna think of that. So if you start out with layer one wrong, I'm not saying you can't fix it, you just have to, you have a problem, you gotta go fix it. So just uh, as much as you can, think about, especially, I think we've had a lot of people asking about glittering, and I haven't done any glittering yet just because I'm, uh, the people that we get our glitter from are in New Jersey, and I just don't have the heart to call them because I'm sure it's just horrible up there from everything I've heard. So I don't have enough glitter on hand to really do it yet. But glitter is one of those that it's extremely important that you understand what goes first, what goes second, and what goes third. And that's really, think about making a cake, building a bridge, no matter what it is you're doing, if you're making something or creating something, every step matters in terms of which goes first or second. So I just went ahead and did that color on there. I'm gonna come back later and add some stripes, okay? This one, I'm gonna make it yellow. I like the yellow. So I'm gonna go over here and wash my brush real quick. I'm gonna put yellow on there. And you can, I think you guys can kind of see, uh, even, cause I got a lot of lighting going on in here. I'm about to go blind with all these lights. I think you can kind of see, I have a lot of paint on there. That's my style. Part of that comes from the fact you want a good base coat. And part of that comes from the fact that I know this chicken is gonna be outside for years and years and years to come. I'm confident about the material that I use. So I think y'all heard me say that we use MDO. 
But in addition to that, I want my paint to look good, so we use that exterior house paint. And I'm gonna put quite a bit on here. And it's just a coverage issue is all it is. Okay, so I've got my yellow there. So there we go. I'm going to paint that side, painting the sides like we were talking about. And then, and as you can see, I haven't spent a whole lot of time base coating. You, as you get uh, more experience, you won't spend much time base coating either because you can whiz through it kind of quick. On this last one, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it in this other kind of green looking color. And then we're just gonna have to let this thing dry but I've got another one over here that I worked on this afternoon because I wanted to have different phases to show y'all. So, there we go. Got our green, just about the way we want it. So at this point, I, I'm not gonna put it outside because it's seven o'clock at night, but uh, if I, uh, I'm trying to get enough paint out of here. Oh, oh, I owe y'all got too much paint. All right, so when you do that, because that is possible. So you see, I don't know if you can see, I've got paint dripping everywhere over here because my squeeze bottle had a, a, a problem. So I just, I've got a trash can under here. So I'm going to do this. There we go. I'm going to make it go like that. I'm going to cover those sides. This is why it's important that you understand this is not going to come out of your clothes. It's not going to come off the floor. But if you, one day I'm going to do a video so y'all can see the floor of my art room. Yes. Kind of crazy. All right, but I'm gonna have to clean this paint up because if I don't, I'm gonna get it all over my shoes. And then I'll trace it all over the house and that won't be good. All right. But it's kind of cool that stuff like that happens because I think sometimes people think I've painted for 30 years that nothing ever goes wrong. I always know what I'm doing. I'm always in control. And I always mean for everything to happen and nothing could be further from the truth. I don't always know what I'm doing. I'm not always in control. So, I've got a lot of paint on there. We're gonna let it dry. But since I worked on this this afternoon, I'm ready to go and showing you guys some shading. So I showed you the base coating and we're gonna talk about shading. Now, I don't know if you can tell it, but in that, there's a little bit of a wing right here and it says, hey y'all. So I'm gonna start there. And again, this is all dry, so that's good. So when I pull this closer to my body and I start with the letters, hey y'all, it's all good that I'm not getting paint everywhere. Well, maybe I'll get paint some places, but this is gonna be pretty cool. Now, the CNC, we drew this file for the CNC to put in those letters, hey y'all. Just so you know, that was something that we liked, but I'm working with a brush right here. This is called a script liner. Not real happy with it, because it's not looking like it wants to bend too good. So we're gonna try something else. This is a script liner that I never wanna throw away, even though it, technically, it's really a bit the dust, but I think I can use it. And I, it's kind of like a pair of tennis shoes. Sometimes you have your favorite old pair of tennis shoes. You may not wear them out in public, but they sure are comfortable to wear at home. And that's kind of what I got going here. And the reason I like this brush is it's given me a wide stroke. So I'm coming up here and I'm just going to do, hey y'all. Now, I don't know of anybody. I think there are some people, I'm not one of them. I think most people struggle with lettering. I have always struggled with it. Uh, there are some things that I'm pretty good about and then there's other things I still struggle. So it's kind of a, an art in and of itself. So that's why we tend to uh, go ahead and put the lettering on here because if we didn't, then you'd have to worry about cutting a, a stencil or you'd have to worry about drawing it perfectly and um, that's mm, a lot of stress. So we have the CNC machine etching this hay y'all right on here just as if it were any other Part of the pattern and all I'm doing is I'm coming in and filling in between the lines uh, and this is kind of um, it, it's the tedious part but since it's in the middle I went ahead and started with it because I don't want all this wet okay I want all that dry because as you can see kind of short so I'm gonna be leaning over it and I'm gonna put hay on here now we could do, you know, depending on what we wanted, we could have put the word welcome or, or whatever. Um, but I kind of like the idea of, hey y'all, it's a Southern thing. So I'm, I am putting a lot of paint on here. I know, I think you can see it. And I'm in some cases not real happy with some of these lines that I'm seeing. So after it dries tomorrow, whenever uh, I'm not so tired, 
I'll probably come in here and do some touch up on this. So here's the deal. Whenever you're painting and you feel like things are uh, not the way you want it, it's not looking good, it's not you know turning out, you're getting frustrated, whatever the case may be. For whatever reason, it's not meeting your expectation, let's say. You have two things that you can do, and either one I find very helpful depending on my mood, honestly. You can kind of push through that and keep going and just get the paint on the board, as I say. In other words, get the paint in the general area and worry about tomorrow coming back and being a little bit more uh, precise with it. Um, it really depends on where you're at. Or you can just say, you know what, I'm not feeling it and I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk away. I've done both and a lot of it depends on what I feel like. But it is important to get the paint on the board because you can't even make a correction if you don't have anything on the board. So you kind of have to go um, with what's gonna work. So this hay, y'all, I think is part of the what makes me really like this pattern. And I've just, and this is, what I'm using is called a script liner. And we've had a lot of people ask us about brushes. And gosh darn, this whole situation we're in, you know, we can't do a whole, whole lot. Although we are reaching out to uh, some of the suppliers and asking them, is there any way that we could uh, do an affiliate link where you guys could order online? And um, so we are working on that. We have heard you. Um, I can't make any promises. I mean, I can promise you we are working on it on our end. Uh, I'm not sure how successful we're going to be right now because of what's going on, but we are working on it. And then you guys, I promise you, if we get that, y'all will be the first to know because we will be blasting it all over the Facebook. Um, so, hey, y'all, here we go. And I'm going to let that, I'm not even going to try to mess with this black tonight because right now it's about 10 till 8. And this is not going to be dry for quite some time. But when I get up in the morning and it's totally dry, I'll probably come in here and do some cleanup or touch up, I call it. So I've got a lot of black paint on there. Hey, y'all. Okay, you can see there's a lot of paint on there. I'm going to leave that alone. There's a little few things about it I'm not real, real crazy about, but it's all good. All right, so in the spirit of working through the in the middle of the project. This is not on the pattern, so you don't have to do it, but it kind of came to me that eh, it might be good to do it. Sometimes you guys might have these around the house. I have a lot of them just because we paint a lot. So, uh, I think the trick to this, because people will say, how do you not get the bubbles? Well, sometimes you, you just get bubbles. So I think, let's try this. I'm gonna try turning it and you still have some bubbles, but it'll come, not bubbles, uh, maybe wrinkles is the right word, is the right word I need to say. But I think polka dots are just uh, a really cool, fun, neat uh, detail. And really the idea on anything like that is to go random, do not make them look patterned. Just kind of do something where it doesn't look like, you know, you have a, a real big pattern. So sometimes you want to come off the edge with that a little bit. You might want to come over here. And all I'm trying to do is put some polka dots on here that don't have a real organizational pattern. And I think that adds a lot to it. Not a lot of time I'm spending on this, as you can see. I don't have a whole lot of paint left, but that's all right. I think I got enough. So just a few little polka dots here and there can give your project a kind of a cute look, I think. All right, so we've got the white, we've got the red, we've got the black, we've got the polka dots. So I'm all good with that. And then I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna work on this part. Now, I think um, somebody posted on Painters Club um, that they, talk, they talked about shading. So here's the deal. Shading is really one of those things that you really have to work at, but it's all good when you get it done, you're gonna like it. I'm gonna use a kind of a small pencil because I don't have a lot of area on my flower. So, and shading again, I'm, I've showed y'all before, all I'm doing is dipping it in that paint at an angle and I'm gonna work towards me. That's just what I do. That feels comfortable to me. And I'm going out on the outside and I'm coming back and bringing it to me. And I'm trying to make my cute little sunflower, right? And all I'm doing is just going around the perimeter of those flower petals. You can come back and do this. And again, I'll come back and probably put some white on it. And there we go. Like so. I'm going to 
and do that. I'm gonna come in here like so. All right, I'm gonna come in here in a little bit and put some other stuff on there. But that, that part is just the shading part, it's not the outlining. Of course, the yellow is the base coat, and this is what I call shading yellow, okay? It's just a shade. So I'm going to go ahead and shade the little green at the bottom, the stem and the leaf, and we use uh, something called shading green, right? How original. So, okay. Don't need a whole lot. Sometimes when my, you'll see me do this, and that's probably at the cringe of anybody who's, they'll say, what the heck are you doing? I'm trying to get those brush things to kind of fan out on me. Because sometimes when a brush is wet, it wants to clump together. And I want the, I want my bristles very wide apart because that's how I'm gonna get my shade. And then I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna bring it up here like so. And you can see when you just start doing this part, that's when you're like, oh, okay, it starts to come to life a little bit. And there's no right or wrong. You just kind of shade. I'm kind of doing a little bit of leaf. That's all I did. That's all I did. But I'm gonna go ahead and move this around and come over here because I did this earlier this afternoon so I could show you guys the stripes. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do some shading on this green. Uh, shading is just something I cannot resist. And those of you who've been out to the shop, you can see there's just something almost on everything that we do. We put some sort of shading on most things, not everything, but on most things. It's all about creating that drama. You don't have to shade, but I think if you ever really kind of start doing it, you'll like it. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna do in terms of shading. We still have a lot more work to do, but not on the green shading. So I'm reaching over here and I am cleaning that shading brush again. That's all I'm doing. I didn't see this and I really should have, but I should have, when I had the shading yellow, I should have done this. All right, so I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna shade this. And when you start putting the shading on, you kind of start seeing your project kind of takes on a really different uh, depth, depth, depth. Everybody say that, y'all. Like that. So at this point, I know I've got to do my yellows. I mean, I mean my purples and my blues. And then, I think he's so cute. Uh, I don't feel painter. All right, I'm going to do some shading on the blue. All right, so I've got this. This was kind of a more of a subtle shade, but it still does the trick. And I'm just dipping a little bit of paint in there. I'm not gonna shade this part. It is very, very dark. And if I start trying to shade that, it'll turn black and then it kind of looks, I don't know, not good. But I will do some highlighting on this and bring this to light in a little bit. All right, so I'm taking that brush and I'm just gonna put some purple on here. Okay. There we go. As you can see, I'm getting purple. I'm gonna come over here and do some purple. If you want, it depends on the angle that you hold that brush is how wide you're gonna get your shade. That and how much um, pressure you put on it. All right, so I'm kind of starting to like the turkey, the uh, feather part. It's kind of looking real different, kind of funky look, which I, I think is cool for this project. I'm not really happy about, I mean, I'm not really gonna do a lot of shading in here. I'm gonna leave that alone. And I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back and do a lot of highlighting on that. But I will show you something on down here on the legs. I'm gonna put a little bit of shading on this. Uh, this is called a shading brown. We use it a lot in uh, reindeers, turkeys at Thanksgiving, and gingerbreads. Those of you who've been out to our shop, you know we do a lot of gingerbreads. Well, I do a lot of turkeys too, but. Um, and of course I'm running out of cups. I should have filled up these cups before I started. All right. So I've got a little bit of shading brown in here, right? I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna kind of come in here and get that little bit of paint. I'm not putting a lot of paint on here. It's just a little bit. But as you can see, 
what does it do? It starts to really make my lines show up, or as you might say, pop. The secret to the chicken, I think, is just kind of making him um, look a little bit whimsical, not really like a real, real chicken, but just kind of like of a, a goofy looking chicken, which I, th I think is cool. And I'm shading that with some shading brown. And I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna go over here. So when I look at this though, this tells me we need something in here. So a lot of times I come back and I'll do this or that, or this or that. No rhyme or reason to make it do that other than you wanna just kind of give it a little bit of color in there. Now I talked about gray polka dots. Let's talk about polka dots here real quick. So I'm gonna get that uh, script liner that wasn't working too well a while ago. And I'm gonna put some dots on here. Mm, think about the middle of your sun, your uh, sunflower. So we're gonna just put some dots in here. Again, I'm just kind of doing a random pattern, nothing. I've got what, six dots there? So let's go back and do some dots in yellow. So those are the darker ones. When I do a sunflower, I like for them to be colorful. So we're gonna come back and do this. And you can tell I'm putting a lot of paint on there. So of course this thing is gonna have to sit all night because I've got so much paint on here. All right, there we go. Starting to put those things down. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some outlining, okay? Now, um, as I said earlier, Ashley's working on some affiliates that we can try to get you guys some brushes. Now, for those of you who are struggling with outlining, there's a couple of options that you can do. You could always do a painter's marker, a, a paintball pen, a uniball pen. They're, they're at every art store you've ever been to. Um, I don't really have any recommendations on them one way or the other because I haven't used them in probably 30 years. But if that's something you wanna do, you certainly can. I can't afford that because I put a lot of paint on my stuff. So, but if you're struggling with outlining, here's the thing. If you've never done outlining and you're struggling with outlining, you are normal. That's all that means, just normal. Everybody struggles with outlining, so don't let that intimidate you. Uh, I don't know anybody who's starting out. You know, the base coating, you're probably doing okay with that, and then we start the shading, and you're like, oh, okay, well, I don't know about this, but you can kind of get through it, and then the, the uh, what, we, what I call the outlining with this script, script liner is a little different because it's a little bit more precise. So don't feel intimidated, but don't feel bad because it is intimidating. Uh, I remember when I was first doing it, I was like, Ooh, I was all nervous. Uh, get out some old cardboard, some butcher paper, whatever you can do and just start playing. Um, that's the only way you're gonna learn. But if you will learn it, I think you will like the look of your projects. And um, I tend to kind of have a heavier hand. That doesn't mean you have to, okay? So we're gonna kind of come in here, but if you can see when I start outlining, your project really starts getting that, what I call that definition. Everything kind of starts coming together with your project. Now, I'm not happy in doing a black outline out here, so I'm gonna do an orange outline. So for this right now, I'm gonna leave it alone. Well, how do you decide? You strictly decide based on what you like. There's no right, there's no wrong. It's whatever, I just happen to like uh, a lot of orange outline on my shading yellow. So that's just what I do. But if you can master the outline part with this, you are good to go. You're very good to go. Uh, it's not easy, but it is very doable. And I have been doing a lot of outlining for a long time, so I can go fast, but I have a lot of practice, okay? And now you can notice in my project, I have some green paint sticking out here, don't I? I'm not freaking out about it. I'm not going, oh my God, I can't believe that. Doesn't bother me at all. I'm leaving it alone. I'm gonna come back to it later. I'm gonna address that later, okay? I promise, we'll address it. We're just not gonna address it right now. Okay, so I'm gonna come back here. What am I, all I'm doing right now is I'm giving that chicken's body an outline. So outline is about creating boundaries and definition between two colors. That's what it's about. So it really starts to give your project some definition where you can kind of see, hmm. Now you may have a very, very light hand on outlining where I have a very, very heavy one. No biggie, no right or wrong. So I've got to come in here and do my feet, right? Chicken feet. Hey, I guess as long as the dude's got feet, that's all that matters, right? Okay, so I'm just coming in here, 
hitting some of those lines that the CNC put that we call etching. And I'm gonna come in here and kind of give him this division between his toes. And I'm gonna come in here and do that. I'm gonna go back over here, like so. Mm -hmm. so. So you guys can see, no biggie. I'm gonna come around again, I'm moving my project around. I'm moving it all around. I'm gonna work on these tail feathers because to me, this is the part that has the most um, detail, but it's also, I just think it's the cutest. It gives it the most personality, so to speak. Okay, now I'm going in between, how do you know what to outline? Well, kind of whatever you want. I tend to outline just really between the two colors a lot. And sometimes I go on the edge and sometimes I don't. It's just strictly a matter of what I think is gonna look good. Uh, remember, once you've already outlined it, you can't unoutline it hardly. So sometimes I go with less is better. You can always come back and put another black stroke on there if you want to, but you can't necessarily take it off. I guess you could, but it would be a pain in the you know what. Not, not that you would want to do that. So I'm bringing a lot of paint in there with my brush, hitting it. And then I can see I've got some still some white showing, so I'm going to go back the other direction. Going back and forth. Moving the black paint to where I want it, okay? Now, I am not, not, not a, having a hard time making a decision. I think what I'm going to do, I'm not going to put black around this. I'm going to show you why here in a minute. I think what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go ahead and outline the sunflower, and then we're going to highlight this guy a lot. And um, think of highlighting as uh, the finishing touches. And I want you to always, if you go out there and see our stuff, you're never gonna see anything without some white on it. That's just what I did. That's just the way it is. Because I believe in it that much, okay? So I'm gonna put some white right in here, just to kind of come in here and do this. And do that, do that, do that, do that, okay. I'm gonna put white right here. How do you know where to put the white? Well, there's no right or wrong answer. I don't guess you really know. You just start and um, stop whenever you want to, okay? So I still have to outline that, but here's what I'm gonna do with this. I'm gonna kinda, kind of, I'm not gonna make this perfect. I'm gonna make this kind of, a, oh, what is the word I'm looking for? It's kind of different than the black. You can see the black. I put a lot of heaviness into it. This, I'm kind of coming back in and just making it really, really light. I'm gonna go in the middle of my gray just because I like doing that. You don't have to. I'm gonna put some white in there. Okay, I'm gonna work him back around again. I'm gonna put a little bit of white in here. Remember I showed you the, the green down here? I said, oh, we're not gonna freak out about that. We're gonna come back and fix that in a little bit. I'm gonna come over here. Because here's the thing about painting, you should never really be stressed about it because if it, you don't like it, just wait, wipe it off or let it dry and you can come back and do it again. And I have done that many, many times, many times. All right, so I'm going back over here. I'm going to hit my tail feathers, y'all. I'm not gonna be able to totally finish this guy tonight because he's so wet, but I promise you what I will do, he's gonna be 95% before we before we stop videoing, he'll be 95% done, okay? And what I will do is I'll finish him in the morning and I'll take a picture of him. I'm gonna come in here, this is probably, I don't know if this is a good idea, we'll see it. I always like to put a little dot, but I got so much paint in there, I don't know if that's gonna work. I don't think I can get away with it. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what he looks like with some white on him, and that's that's why I do that, okay? I'm gonna outline this that uh, with some shading orange. I'm gonna put a lot of color on that sunflower because that's just what I like to do. All right, so where's my shading orange? Here it is. I don't have any cups left, so we're gonna go with the lid, okay? All right. So I'm loading this brush. You can sit here and see, what am I doing? I'm trying to get as much paint in there as I can, okay, without overloading. That to me is a loaded brush. That's what you want. If you're trying to outline with no paint on the brush, you're gonna be very frustrated, okay? So watch this orange. It just kind of gives it another dimension. Another dimension is all I'm doing.
coming in here like so. I'm gonna do that real close. And just because I can't resist, I'm gonna put one orange in here. That's all I'm gonna do, one. I might be overdoing it here, you guys. Okay. Now, I see a little bit of white over there. I'm gonna go fix. But pretty much, I'm done with this guy. Except for tomorrow morning, I gotta get up and fix him when he's a little bit dry. And all I'm gonna do is kind of fix him a little bit. You won't know much of it. Not a whole lot. Okay. All right, guys. He has a lot of paint on him, but I think he's super cute. Didn't spend a whole lot of time on him. Uh, but it does take some time. In the morning, when this is totally dry, what I will do is I will um, do a little bit of touch up on him and I will post a picture tomorrow of what he looks like. And I think what I'm gonna do too, I wanna show you guys, cause I think most of y'all know I've painted for a long time. Um, if I can, tomorrow I'm gonna dig through some really old photo albums. I really want uh, you guys to see some of the very first things I painted, which would have been in the late 80s. I don't know if I have photos that old, but I'll go back and see. Uh, because I want you guys to see my painting very, very, very uh, close up. I'll put it close to the camera when I first started. And I promise you, if you see what I painted when I first started, you will be inspired. Because you will say, wow, look, that's really not that good. Okay? Because it really wasn't. When you first start, it's hard to be, it's hard to be good. Uh, but, so when I first started, I, I struggled. And I didn't have anybody who could really help me a whole lot. So I struggled a lot, but I'm gonna find some photos and I want you to see that because I think it's important uh, for you guys to understand, hey, I can teach you to paint. As long as you practice, you're good. I think I saw a comment, what needs to be touched up? Well, I'm not real happy right now with the lettering. It's okay, but it's a little bit out here. It's kind of, I'm gonna say jiggy jaggy, and I'm not real happy with the red. Um, this is a red wing, if you will, the feather. So tomorrow I'm gonna to kind of come in here and I'm gonna bring it and define this red feather a little bit. And then I'll have to come back in here and really touch up the lettering. That's really all I'm not, not too keen on at this point. But I'm gonna wait for it to dry. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Ashley will be on tomorrow, I think tomorrow night, she's gonna be doing some stuff. So at this point, what we're trying to do is give a how-to video pretty much every day of the stuff that we know you guys are gonna be picking up on Saturday, so that's our goal. Don't forget, we, we've heard you about the brushes. We are looking into that. Be patient, but you guys will be the first to know, uh, you know, what's happening with that. I hope you guys have a great, great evening, and I hope that y'all are not like me, feeling like March and April has been 10 years long. <laughs> it seems that way. So y'all have a good one, and uh, we will see y'all tomorrow. Bye-bye.